Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Bertrand, and welcome to the first episode of The BTD Show, or what we want to be The BTD Show. Uh, we're trying something out here. I uh, hope you enjoy this little experimental trip down a Bike Tires Direct news show lane um, that we're going on. Uh, follow news us down. And, news and more. News and more. Um, we're going to talk about some of the athletes that we work with, some events coming up, um, some like nerdy internal BTD stuff. Um, and yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, we hope you enjoy. So first of all, uh, getting into the news roundup, uh, this weekend is Sea Otter right now. It is, is sea, otter. sea Otter. Yeah, by the time this video is premiering, Future Me will actually be at Sea Otter. Um, what is Sea Otter? Sea Otter is the largest uh, bicycle industry trade show in America uh, that takes place in Monterey, California. Um, okay. There's hundreds of vendors that show up. Uh, it's open to the public as well as um, industry folks. Uh, there are a couple days, Thursday and Friday, which is when we'll be there, are mostly industry. Uh, so we'll be able to walk around, check out the latest tech, the newest new, nice. the what's up of the what, uh, and see all sorts of crazy stuff. Last year, someone had made a gravel trainer. Um, oh, I think that was feed, so you feedback can feel sports, the actual... so you can feel, feel the actual wow. texture of gravel. So we'll see if they can one-up that this year. Um, yeah, we're going to chat with some of our athletes who are racing. Uh, that's cool. the other big a race. part of Sea Otter. Yeah, there oh, are a and it's part of the Lifetime Grand Prix? Yes. The yeah, mountain yeah, bike yeah. race? Yeah, there are a number of races. Uh, there's the mountain bike race. There's a gravel race. Um, a lot of different ways to participate. There's uh, downhill enduro. Um, really, uh, Sea Otter is very largely mountain bike focused, um, which makes it pretty fun. There's usually people doing wheelies all over the place. It's, it's kind of a party. Um, and then, yeah, us who are going, um, we've got meetings, we get to see people in person, which is really nice, and chat with some of our vendors uh, in ways that are not email, which is great. Awesome. So, uh, Well, that sounds like a blast. Yeah, hope should be fun. I hope Future You is having fun down there. Uh, he probably is. Uh, <laughs> Getting I, I some sunshine. I really enjoy it. The sunshine will be nice, and I, I love shooting photos of all the all the people that come out for yeah. that. It's a, it's a blast. Um, Speaking of some of our athletes at Sea Otter, do you want to give a little update on uh, some of our athletes? Totally. And what they're doing? Um, yeah, we've got two highlights uh, that we're going to share with you this week. Um, one is that we were able to do an interview with uh, one of our athletes, Alex Howes, who we've been partnered with uh, since last year. Uh, and we're teaming up with Bike Rumor to host that interview. Uh, cool. And that should hopefully be available within about a week or two of... Um, this YouTube video airing. I mean, you say we, you interviewed. I, I, I did, yeah. Okay. I, I, I interviewed um, Alex. Uh, we ended up talking for nearly an hour. It covered everything from his time in the professional Peloton uh, to some really funny side notes about pooping in hats. <laughs> um, <laughs> some, some some rivalries. Uh, it, it got a little off the rails, but there's also some really, really heartwarming tidbits about um, how to balance the professional life of racing bikes and then, you know, having a family um, and how everything was going through COVID. So awesome. Stay tuned for that. Uh, it was a lot of fun chatting with Alex and um, yeah, we're happy to be partnered up with him. And then um, next is in terms of our other partner athlete, uh, Cynthia Carson, uh, also known as Watt Wagon on Instagram. We are, in addition to um, being a part of her racing season this year, uh, we're part, or we are sponsoring her gravel race that's taking place on May 11th. That's called Gravista, and it's out of Buena Vista, Virginia. Nice. We're getting custom bottles made. We did course tape. We're doing some raffle prizes, podium prizes. Um, so for anyone out on the East Coast looking for something to do on the weekend of May 11th, check out the Gravista Gravel Race. Um, we're sorry we can't make it this year. We're hoping to be out there next year for it, but it looks to be a blast. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, wanted to give a quick rundown of a couple of uh, videos uh, that you can find on this very channel. This one? This one now here, okay. the BTD uh, YouTube channel. Um, we decided to fool around and make a little short for uh, April Fools, um, and uh, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but uh, would strongly recommend uh, checking out our, our uh, April Fools uh, short on this channel. It's um, one of those things that I couldn't believe I was getting paid to make it while I was... <laughs> 
<laughs> helping make it. Yeah. Which I think made it made it pretty fun for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, if you like this kind of news roundup, but prefer a much funnier and more engaging host, uh, the new product releases with Max uh, series uh, is um, fantastic. Going over um, all the awesome stuff that comes into our warehouse. Max does returns and sees all the products that come in and gives a good roundup of exciting stuff that, uh, that comes in uh, basically every month or so. Um, and finally, uh, Bertrand actually uh, just dropped the anatomy of a tire video. I did. So for any of you who are curious about some of the terminology and the parts that go together to make up a bicycle tire, uh, we have a video. You can find the link below, uh, and that'll be a little introduction. Um, we're going to do some deeper dives down the line um, with more in-depth topics. It's, but... it's really cool because it, it helps to sort of demystify when a lot of the brands give their sort of marketing spin on what their tires do, mm -hmm. but it, it ultimately just sounds like gobbledygook. I don't know what a triple compound is. I don't know, you know, like, <laughs> who cares about TPI, right? Yeah. Um, learning more about what those all mean and how the tire is made, I think, gives you a much better uh, sense of what the differences are between tires and which yeah. tire is right for which application. Yeah, and it'll give you a little bit of a, a head start in deciphering what some of those propri proprietary um, right. terminologies mean. Cool. Well, the f uh, next thing we wanted to do is actually answer some questions from our audience. And for this show, our audience is actually... Y'all, uh, BTD's customers, um, as relayed to us from our uh, customer service team, um, who are here uh, to answer your question uh, six days a week and uh, love just talking about bikes mm -hmm. and shooting the breeze. Um, so please, you know, reach out to them anytime um, you have questions or anything. Um, they're always happy to answer them. But also, if you have a question that you want us to answer, you can leave it down in the comments below and uh, we'll get to some of those questions on the next episode. Um, so the first question that uh, was relayed to us was about tire sizing. And the question is, what's the difference between French tire sizing, American sizing, international <clears throat> sizing? Why do people refer to different tires in so many different ways? Yeah. Well, we get this a lot too because it's not even the same on the same tires. Right. Some, some brands, for whatever reason, um, post combinations of the sizes and so there's really only one way to truly determine uh, what size tires they are um, and uh, I think this is a good opportunity for you to maybe answer that question. Yeah so I mean I think a lot of people know the are most familiar with the what they call French tire sizing. So mm -hmm. when you say you have a 700C tire right. Or 650B for those of you who are still living six years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, that's an, an old way of referring to tire sizes that actually talks about the exterior diameter of the tire. And it's a nominal exterior diameter of the tire, um, which means it's, it's essentially including the width of the tire, yeah. um, which doesn't tell you a lot about the tire rim interface, unfortunately. So when you're trying to find a tire that fits the rim... That has been standardized, but the, the number itself is not is meaningless in terms of the actual diameter of the rim. Yeah. So what we're big fans of is the standard ETRTO, which is the European Tire and Rim Technical Organization. Um, their tire measurements are in millimeters and are the bead seat diameter. And so that's the <clears throat> diameter of bead uh, to bead which is across mm -hmm. the tire. Yeah, sitting uh, within um, when um, the bead is sat within the inside of the rim, yep. which uh, I talk a little bit about beads in that anatomy of a tire video. Good call out, good call out. Um, and so those common sizes of that, so a, a uh, 26 inch tire, quote unquote, for an older mountain mm -hmm. bike is 559. Uh, a 650B or 27.5 tire is 584. And a 700C tire is 622. And that's measured in millimeters. And that number will almost always or basically always be on the sidewall of the tire. And it'll be written usually either first will be the width of the tire and then the uh, 
bead seat diameter of the tire will be so 5622 or 45584 will be written on the side of the tire and so if you're not sure what you need that's by far the easiest and most consistent way to look at it um there are a couple good tools too that we have on our website uh we've got a really good article that goes over almost every imaginable um tire size and then if you click on the tire size after identifying what size tire you have on your bike it'll show you what if anything we have in stock that's uh, awesome and then sheldon brown uh is also a really good resource for that and we'll put links to both of those uh if, below if you have found this segment interesting rather than <laughs> boring as sin definitely read the sheldon brown article on tire sizing it's fascinating um, so the next question we had is, when's the next sale? When is this particular item going to be on sale? What's on sale? Yeah, and the easiest way for you to figure that out is to subscribe to our email newsletter, which is curated uh, by Ben, uh, among one other person. Um, and those go out pretty frequently. Uh, I think we send... We send three emails Three a emails week. a week. Um, so if you want to be looped into when uh, the big sales are happening, the best deals... Uh, that's your number yep. one way. Or just cruise by the site, and most of that's on our homepage as well. Uh, we rotate our sale banners regularly, and uh, you can usually find a good collection of things there. Also, don't forget, we offer 30 days of price protection on all your purchases. So if you're nervous that something's going to go on sale after you buy it, you can always just go ahead and place the order. If you see it on a lower price on our site within 30 days, we'll match the yep. price. We'll refund you the difference. So we want everyone to feel confident that they're getting the best price. Yep. Okay, this week we wanted to take a deep dive into hydration. The weather has been getting warmer here in Portland. I know for me, I've gone from bringing one small bottle on my rides yeah. to multiple bottles and still coming home feeling a little dried out. Yeah, so hydration is super important in that respect, especially, as you said, as it gets warmer out. Uh, and there are a number of ways that you can stay hydrated on the bike. And hydration isn't just drinking water. Hydration is replacing what your body loses while you are sweating and working out, um, which are electrolytes. So and, drinking uh, beer after the ride. Right, <laughs> exactly. Um, and then in some cases, too, it's really important not only to rehydrate, but to fuel while you're riding. And there are a number of uh, nutrition manufacturers that have some pretty easy-to-use tools lined up to help you do just that. Um, Scratch Labs is one of my favorites. Speaking of... And they offer a number of different mixes. Uh, this is their regular hydration mix. This is their um, super high carb mix. They recently changed the name on that. I wanted to make sure I got it right. And they just released an everyday hydration mix as well. And how those all work is the regular hydration mix has a little bit of calories in there. It's got some fuel. Super high carb mix will be for race day when you really just need to be drinking your calories mm -hmm. rather than eating them because you can't stop. Serving size is seven scoops. It's a lot. Wow. It can get pretty thick, but it works really, really well. And then, So how many carbs are in seven scoops of this? Uh, seven scoops has... 100 grams. 100 grams of carbohydrates. Because, okay. like, they're recommending... I mean, the old... I remember... The recommendation for, for fueling was like 80 to 100 grams of carbs an hour. But these days, it seems like that number is just it's going gone, up and up and up. It's gone pretty, pretty far upwards of so that. So you drink a bottle of that an hour plus, right? Take yeah. a gel or two mm -hmm. for big hard rides. Um, well, and the nice thing, too, I think about uh, what some companies are doing now, um, again, Scratch, for example, is they're making it a little bit more modular. So their everyday mix that they have is very low carb. I think it's got five calories per serving okay um so it's not for fuel it's just for replacing so you can get yourself electrolytes prehydrated prehydrated or mm -hmm. you can kind of make your own cocktail on the bike mm -hmm. i know for me uh when i was racing um mountain bikes last year i had found a pretty good combination of the super high carb mix and the hydration mix that was just the right amount of fuel for me without being too much or too little for a for a two-hour race um Got it. And I think some people, what I've what I've seen people do is actually mix <clears throat> extra strong. So you can do double scoops in one bottle and then water in the other bottle. Yep. And that way you have, or, you know, hyd just hydration and not fuel in the other bottle. And that way you're not completely destroying <laughs> yourself constantly. You have something to drink that's not, yeah. you know, well, 
a little thick and syrupy, honestly. As an aside, too, it's always good to have plain water on your rides, even if you're racing, because you never know when you're going to have to rinse something off and you don't want to yeah. squirt it with syrupy drink mix. Yeah. Like your drivetrain, a cut, yeah. you know, a lost dog. Another easy option, um, and I like to have these just like in my car, uh, you know, I have them here at the office um, for kind of any time, or these tabs like this. These are from Goo and Hammer. We've also got Noon. Um, and these are just single serving hydration tabs that have electrolytes and a little flavor. And you can just toss those into you just a bottle or them, a right? glass. Of... <laughs> you just toss them into a bottle or a glass of water and they dissolve. They make it a little fizzy and they give you all those electrolytes. Um, and uh, honestly, those uh, are super helpful as a because you can just throw this in a bag or whatever. Yeah. Easy to carry with you, easy if you need to, if you're on an all day adventure and you're traveling with like a, a filter uh, and you yeah. need to pull water from a river or another yep. source, uh, you can add electrolytes to yeah. that water. That can go uh, in a and pocket. It's, yeah, it's super easy to just stuff in a jersey pocket. Yep. Well, let's talk a little bit about what all that stuff goes inside. Gee willikers, where'd that come from? Oh my goodness. The magic of post production. Wonderful. So, um, I, I thought it'd be really cool to talk about these because our colleague and absolutely incredible cartoonist and designer, Matt Barton, has been making these custom uh, Bike Tires Direct bottles, and they're my favorite in the world. They're um, based on the Specialized Purist bottle, which is a fantastic, um, uh, easy open, easy close. They don't leak. Um, Pretty much the gold standard, I would say, for custom bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these two are... Our uh, podium bottle, which has our uh, ca podium cat, turtle, and mouse on there, um, as well as our own uh, Portland International Raceway, where uh, Monday and Tuesday night racing takes place, as well as uh, some some XC racing, actually, right? There's and XC cross. and cyclocross. Yeah, a lot of racing happens at this, uh, which is like a mile from my house. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and then this one has the Portland skyline on there with Mount Hood, um, the St. John's Bridge in there, sort of a, um, an amalgam of Portland monuments, mm -hmm. um, as well as other designs. Uh, there's yeah, Matt's doing uh, our design for Gravista, so anyone who goes to the Gravista race will get one of those bottles uh, designed by Matt uh, that features our logo and the Gravista logo. Who, when I say he's an incredible cartoonist, I feel like that doesn't quite... <laughs> He's cartoons in the New Yorker. <laughs> He's a, a true, uh, like, brilliant, yeah. gift, like, tremendously talented. We're so lucky to have him. Yeah, very lucky to have him. Um, well, speaking of what the bottles then go inside, yeah. we'll talk a little bit about these cages. For sure. Um, bottle cages are a really small detail of your bike. For a lot of folks, uh, it's usually the last thing you think about. This is so light. But it's one of the most important. Um, and that's because if your bottles are flying out while you're riding, and especially if you're racing, you have to stop, go pick them up, or you're short that hydration mix that you need to get you through the race. And it's dangerous. It's dangerous for people behind you. You see it in the pro peloton all the time, bidons getting tossed and getting under someone's bicycle, and it can sometimes cause an accident. Um, but that being said, uh, bottle cages don't just have to be functional. They can also be pretty beautiful, too. Uh, we've These got so some cool. super fun ones from Portland Design Works, uh, which is a local company. We're good buddies with them. Uh, this one's a snake. This one's an owl. And they have a whole series of bottle cages that are animal themed, really fun, work really well. Uh, the snake is a side release cage. So if you have a... Um, pretty tight triangle in your bicycle and can't do the full vertical release, you can pull them out of the side on this. Um, those are really lovely. This guy's super snug. This bottle is not going, I think you could see this bottle's not going anywhere. Uh, and then uh, the cages uh, that I personally use on all my bikes are actually the Wolf Tooth Morse Cage Tie bottle cages. They're called the Morse cage because of this dot dash pattern uh, that goes through where the mounting points are. And that gives you more flexibility? It gives you a lot of adjustment. Um, so let's just say you need to move a cage out of the way for a bigger bottle, or you need to adjust something to fit something beneath a bottle cage. Okay. Um, or your bike might not be designed with really tight tolerances for cages. You can snug your down tube and your seat tube cages uh, really, really close together 
with this nice. um, to make room for a frame bag. Uh, again, bigger bottles potentially. You can't uh, they're see also these are. I there's nothing here. No. This weighs nothing. Uh, they weigh about the same as a CD. If any of you remember what those are, it's wild. Less than a nickel. This is like. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, they're pretty amazing. Uh, they also make a stainless steel version that's a little more affordable um, if you want all the functionality uh, and don't care so much about the weight and nice. uh, want to save a few bucks. Um, something we've been seeing more and more lately is these stainless steel bottles. This company, Bevo, kind of pioneered this design, and these Camelback bottles in a similar design just came out. Um, and, you know, previously stainless steel wasn't really an option for bike bottles because you, it's not compressible, right? You can't squeeze mm -hmm. it, so there's no way to get the water out. But they've got this new design that includes a straw that lets air into the bottle so that the beverage, whether it's water or your hydration mix, can escape. And that means that you can now have bottles that are made out of stainless steel, which is naturally resistant to germs, contamination, you can throw it in the microwave. No. You can't throw this, not the microwave. You can Woo! throw it in the dish. You can throw it in the dishwasher. Ooh, we were about to get a lawsuit for that don't, one. Don't put these Do in the microwave. Do not microwave these. Uh, we also, I don't have a dishwasher either. Do you? I don't know. Okay. But these are super easy to like. You just you know, the one of the biggest drawbacks to me of plastic bottles is how much of a pain it is to wash yep. them. And I think these solve some of that as well as being more environmentally friendly and you know folks being concerned about microplastics in their system i know for me i've eliminated plastic drinkware and and like dishes from my life almost entirely the sort of last frontier where plastic is in contact with my food is bottles and it's constant yeah so this is really exciting to me for being able to eliminate that sort of you know admittedly perhaps a little bit paranoid <laughs> but like you know it's real and, and you know it's yeah. and it's increasingly a problem so um this is a great option for keeping that kind of stuff out of your system as well as like i mentioned the stainless steel is naturally um sort of antimicrobial mm -hmm. another option for antimicrobial and here we have the actual microwave portion of our show which is the elite neato bottle sterilizer which uh, neither Ben nor I have used before because we don't, in addition to not having dishwashers, don't have microwaves. But this uses uh, purportedly the power of steam to sanitize your bottles. Um, should we just give it a quick uh, test, see how yeah. it works? See if it's easy, see if we can. Do you think we can do this thing again? I don't know. Let's we try. Can try. Oh Ooh. my. Uh, okay. All right. Well, are you gonna are you gonna operate the unit Vanna White this and I'll yeah I think I think I can do that okay I'll scoot over here so there are some instructions on the back of Which this we're not gonna read telling you <laughs> how to use it um, so it looks like we got a yeah what do you think uh, yep I think we so here's our bottle it's filthy you can't see but it's absolutely filthy. And we've got a uh, sort of circular rubberized ring and a little grate that fits right down in there. And that'll keep the water at the bottom. I'd imagine that's kind of the fill line. And then this guy just goes right on there. And so I think the bottle will just squeeze right in there and then the power of steam. Well, you, you can put the cap in there too at the same time. Oh. I cheated because I looked at the product photos. Jeez Louise. But yeah, okay. cap, cap goes in there. Cap goes in, water goes in, and then we can get this up to the roughly the fill line. I don't know why I'm here. Ben's doing this all on his own. You gotta put it in. Oh, that's right. What do you think? Two minutes? One minute? <laughs> Maybe we should read the instructions for this part. We don't want to melt the bottle. <laughs> One minute. One minute. One hey. One minute. And actually, double checking our work. You nailed it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, Intuitive. All right. I think Elite nailed it. Quick minute. Hey. All right. And we have, uh, I'm going to use a little caution here. 
it's I assume hot. it's hot. Um, it feels yeah. very warm. And Look at that. Woo! Steamy. Yeah. Wow. The lid here. And I'd imagine, so here's one thing that I didn't do that I bet you should, is probably pop open mm. your nozzle. Or take the nozzle off. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you can do that. Great. Well, that was easy as pressing a button. Yeah. What are we going to do next? <sighs> we're mounting uh, no. tires. Okay. I didn't remember. Yeah. We're mounting tires. That's so right. we're going to have a bit of a contest. Bertrand mounts tires for a living. Uh, Bertrand I, is, among many other things, our in-house photographer. And every set of tires on our website has basically been mounted mm -hmm. and photographed by him. So I am definitely at a disadvantage or at least have less experience than Bertrand, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, well, should, should we do one of these? Wow, that was cool. Dang. All right, so uh, we've got head-to-head -head set up here. We've both got uh, what is Panaracer Pasela Protite, which one of the goats. Absolute, for a, like a $40 tire, you cannot beat this. Cannot this beat is, it. Like it feels like an expensive race tire. Yeah. It's got puncture protection. It's like basically every like restored vintage bike should have yep. these gorgeous tan walls. Everything about yeah. it is perfect. So um, I'm so excited we, to mount them up. It's been a little while. Kyle, you want to count us in? All right, ready? Lamont starts. Oh yeah, Lamont start. We got to get our... <laughs> Panicking. Wait, there's no logo on the rim. Stomping me. Oh, we'll see. It's a little tighter than I remember these tires being. Also, folks, if you're doing this at home, be sure to actually check and make sure your tube is not sticking out. Uh, Do you have your tube in there already? Oh, yeah, buddy. Always check the valve. And that's it. Bead all right, is all right, all right. sap. Heart rate is sitting healthily uh, just below Z2 right now. <laughs> it's an endurance ride for you. <laughs> I'm definitely at least at tempo, <laughs> if not threshold. Oh, muscle, pure muscle. <sighs> This technique is amazing. I've never seen anything oh, yeah. like it. Oh yeah, that's where the workout comes in. It's getting there. Keep going. That is at pressure. And I think it just sat. Let's check it. That's at like 100 PSI, so. Yeah, looks good. All right. Nice job, well. buddy. Whew. Oh, what the f- What is that? What is that, Bertrand? Uh, you know, I- Look at- show, show the people. I gotta be honest. What is that? Yeah. What is that? That logo is not lined up to that. You know, I stem. didn't even, um, I didn't even try. I know you didn't. You came close without trying. I but I think that- without trying, but- There's a penalty there. Hey, Kyle, how uh, much, how many seconds did I lose by? Um. I mean, that was about a two-minute difference. It's about a two-minute penalty for not lining up the valve stem, I think. You know, I think that's fair, because if I had done this at home, I for sure would have taken the tire off and redone it. Yeah. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining along for this first uh, edition of what we're hoping will be a regular series uh, that we can do of the BTD show. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, also, don't forget... Leave us some questions down below. Yeah, if you have questions you'd like us to answer, uh, we've got a pretty amazing hive mind here at this company. Yep. Uh, so if Ben or I don't know the answer, we'll find it from someone. And It's a company uh, full of the kind of people who think head-to-head -head tire mounting challenges are fun. So and if that's your kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, we're happy to nerd out anytime. Yep, for sure. Uh, and yeah, uh, give this a shot. See how fast you can mount a tire. Uh, and leave that down in the comments below. I, I'm curious to see if anybody can beat Bertrand's minute 30. I'm sure someone can. I want to see it. 
Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for watching. Yeah, we'll catch you next time.